Hi everyone, now some of you might be looking at this and recognize it as a Intel Nook. It's basically a baby computer. Um, you can see how small it is if I put it in my hand. It's not tiny, but it is pretty small, especially if you compare it to a desktop computer. Now this has an Intel i7 chip inside, 16 gig of RAM and a 250 gig SSD. So it's pretty powerful considering its small size. But along with that size come some heat issues, especially here in the Philippines where, you know, my ambient room temperature is around, I don't know, maybe 27 to 30 degrees Celsius, so pretty high. Um, now it does have a fan built in. If I lift this top piece off, here you can see the top of the fan and the exhaust here and inside is a small fan similar to what you'd find inside a laptop and it sucks air in which comes through the sides and then it exhausts it out um, and this is actually kind of acting like a heat sink on top of the cpu as well so it does have a fan built in and it does okay but i still want it to do a bit better so I opened up an old laptop which is broken and I removed this fan. Now this fan is perfect because it sucks in here and then it blows out here which means I can easily aim the air where I want and what I want to do is blow the air into the side here. So instead of it just sucking air and blowing it out of this exhaust I'm also going to be actively pushing fresh air into there and it's a pretty good size, pretty good match like that. Now this runs on 19 volts, so a regular 12 volt computer fan wouldn't be much good. So luckily this is 5 volts and it does have internal USB headers which means I can wire it directly to the internal header and get my 5 volts. Um, it says it's rated to 0.7 watts, but when I tested this on my USB watt meter it actually measured 0.9 watts. So as a test I've connected a USB cable to it, we'll plug it in and I'll show you it in operation. The nice thing about the Intel Nook is it actually has a dedicated charger port so even when it's turned off you can still get USB power out of one of your ports. So we've got it plugged into the wall but not turned on and if I plug my USB into this port here you can see it comes on and the fan has started spinning. Now you might be able to hear the fan, it is a little bit noisy but I'm not really too worried about noise because I'm not going to run this thing all of the time. I'm only going to run it when I'm doing heavy tasks, for instance, video editing. Let me unplug this. So yeah, I'm only going to run it when I'm doing heavy tasks like video editing, uh, running multiple virtual machines on this, things like that where I want to get extra airflow and help cool this thing down. So my idea is to start by making just a cardboard prototype so I can see where the switch is going to go, where the wiring will go and things like that. And then when I'm happy with that, I'll make a 3D printed version and hopefully it will just clip into this grill here so um, you can easily remove it or put it on as you want. So I'll pause the video and then I'll make my cardboard prototype come back and show you the progress. So here's my prototype from cardboard and electrical tape. Uh, the switch doesn't actually do anything at the moment. It's just there to get an idea of where I want to put it. Originally, I was thinking to put it on top, but then I would have to make this much thicker to accommodate the switch so it's actually better to put it there so I learned something from the prototype um, it's not perfect but it's good enough to get an idea and to at least do some testing to see if it does actually cool down the nook so uh, I'm going to plug this in and then I'm going to hold it here and I'm going to measure the temperatures and see how much difference it makes you can see it's closed at the bottom but it's open at the top so we can suck in air and blow it out here and it's a pretty strong stream if I put these bits of card here you can see we have no problem blowing them around which I'm gonna have to clean up after this so yeah let's uh, point this in here and then let's measure the temperatures so I've now got the Intel Nook under a very heavy load um, temperature's already hitting around 80 degrees, which means this internal fan should turn on any second. I'm just feeling the exhaust at the back. So there you go. Just kicked in at 80 degrees. And it's feeling pretty warm here. 81 degrees. Let's try and get it to steady out. You can see the CPU is at maximum load. 3.4 gigahertz. We're at around 81 degrees, 80 degrees. Let's add our cooling fan to the side and see if it makes a difference. Okay, so far it doesn't seem to be making much difference. Let's 
try and block the side and see if that helps so that it's forced to get air from this side No, it doesn't seem to be making any difference. Let's try blowing from the other side. I can feel a lot of air being blown. Still at around 80 degrees. Doesn't seem to be making a lot of difference. I was expecting to see a drop. Let's try something out. Um, I'll unplug this. I've got a big fan here, or a fairly big fan. I'll try pointing that on top and just see if we can actually make any difference. Okay, we're at 80.8. We don't really seem to be making any difference. Let's hold this here for a while and see what happens. This is, uh, how many watts is this? 30 watts up to 30 watts it's rated at. It's a pretty powerful fan for a system this small, considering this only consumes 15 to 30 watts itself. I mean, we might be maybe pulling it down a couple of degrees, but it's not making as much difference as I had imagined. No, we're not really seeing much of a difference here. Um, maybe the load is just too heavy. It's really, it's really stuck on that maximum temperature. Let me reduce the load so it's not so heavy. I guess the problem is that we're not really hitting the CPU because the CPU is completely covered by this one here, this fan and heat sink. So all we're cooling down is the memory um, and the SSD, which probably don't get that hot anyway, to be honest. But I was hoping that if we could draw extra fresh air in, it would reach the CPU. But it doesn't seem to be making much difference. Let me close off this side. I don't want to give up just yet. So I have this heat sink. Uh, I don't know where this came from. I think I actually bought it as a scrap, scrap heat sink. Uh, I'm going to try put that on there, blow air across that, and see how much difference that makes. And I actually have a little bit of old heat sink compound that I can use to test this. So there it is with the heatsink compound, I only mean, had a little bit, but should be enough to go on there. So let's monitor our temperatures. So I think we've already started to see a drop in temperature. Yeah, we're definitely seeing, oh, fluctuates a bit. Let's wait for some of the heat to transfer from this up to our heatsink here. If this works, it could actually be quite useful because most of the time I have a ceiling fan running. So if I was to modify this top case so that I can have this permanently installed, the ceiling fan would actually blow over this pretty much all the time. So this might actually be quite a good idea. Now, I am by no means an overclocking guru or anything like that so if anyone's watching this and you know thinks i'm doing something very wrong and has a good idea about what i can do let me know because this is all quite new to me i'm not really used to cooling stuff i normally just have a regular desktop computer and you know add a couple big fans and it just kind of works itself out um, but here we have to be a little bit more creative yeah see we are seeing the temperature drop we're down to maybe 51 degrees it's, it's a bit hit and miss but it's definitely lower than when we remove the heat sink. Now it's really hot here, but it's not very hot here. It's just kind of warm. So the temperature is not being spread very evenly over this. So although I intended today to 3D model and print the sort of fan shroud that would clip onto the side here, now I'm not so sure if that's a good idea because it doesn't seem to make any difference when I blow extra air in here. So I don't really know what to do now. I'll try one last thing, which is to remove the bottom of the case, this one here, but that also holds the hard drive, so it would make things a little bit awkward, but I'll remove this and then we'll blow air in from underneath and see what that does. Okay, so we're at 79, 80 degrees at the moment. Let's try turn our fan on. 
This is probably running it's uh, at half speed at the moment, so maybe 15 watts. Let's try to put it on full speed. There you go, we saw a bit of a drop there, 5 degrees, but then it jumped back up again. Yeah, we're not really seeing much of a difference. I'm starting to wonder if air cooling this thing is actually even a possibility because it doesn't seem to make much difference whether you just let the internal fan run or if you add external cooling. I mean, we've seen it, we're starting to see a reasonable drop now. We're down from 80 to around 75 and it seems to be fairly stable at that temperature or less. But we're, we're using 30 watts here. Of course, a lot of the air is actually being wasted going around the outside. Okay, that's a bit better. We're down to 69. We're definitely seeing an improvement here. But of course, it wouldn't be practical to use this big fan. But what I do have is this fan that I took out of a laptop cooling pad. The cooling pad never really worked and it was kind of weak. So I basically took out the fan and the control board, which is just an on off switch and an LED. Um, but this is 5 volts, so we could also use this hooked up to the uh, internal USB port of this or U USB pins. So let's sit it on this and see how much difference that makes. First of all, I'm going to wait for the temperatures to rise again and stabilize because you can see it's climbing at the moment. But we'll see how it works works when we put it on this. So right now it's sucking air underneath and blowing it up so I'm going to raise it off the table a little bit and then sit the nook on top. So like this it can suck fresh air from underneath and then it can blow it up like this. So we're around 76 degrees at the moment, 78, it's still climbing a bit. Let's put the nook on this and see what happens, see if we manage to cool it down a bit. There we go, let's try and line it up so it's kind of enclosed. There we go. Let's see what the temperature does now. Now this fan is obviously not pushing as much air as the big one we were using a little while ago. Um, it only consumes I think around one watt or less. In fact, I'd probably even consider running this at a higher voltage so that it will spin much faster. Of course, it will die faster, but yeah, you know, I'm willing to trade lifetime of the fan for better cooling. So right now, I'm not sure if it's really doing much. I mean, it is keeping us under 80 degrees, but only just. We're not seeing the rapid drop like we did when we had the big fan underneath it. One watt of, you know, cooling fan just might not be enough. So I've now connected a 12 volt power supply to this. Let's turn it on and see if it still works. Okay, so it's now running much faster. And we are seeing a temperature drop. Let me feel the airflow of that. Well, there's a lot more air now. So running at a much higher speed than what it was designed for. So this is a good sign because at 12 volts, this thing is actually managing to cool this down. Now this fan is not meant to run at 12 volts. And I don't know if I'm imagining it or if I can smell some burning. I think I might be able to smell some burning, but that's okay. This is a five volt fan and we're running it at 12 volts. But the good thing is that 12 volt fans is pretty common for desktop computers and I can probably get one that would fit okay with this Intel Nook. And we are seeing a pretty decent temperature drop from it. Not amazing, but not awful either. It's pretty reasonable. Now the only thing with having this underneath is that it kind of complicates things because I've still got to fit this on somehow and I still have to have airflow for this to suck up. So it does complicate things a bit and it's definitely not going to be done today. Um, I was really hoping that my idea of a fan on the side would be good enough but apparently not so yeah I'm definitely gonna have to come back to this if you have any ideas please put them in the comment section below um, because I'm sure there's some people out there who've got like much better ideas about what I should be doing so uh, yeah if you can give any advice please do and if you did enjoy this video please give a thumbs up and subscribe and uh, yeah subscribe come back and hopefully you'll find part two of this with some success 
just as a very quick test before I sign off, let's try put this on the top so we're blowing down on this. Because that would be a good solution, a much easier solution, because then I only have to print a new cover for this that goes like this and then sucks air in from the top and blows it down onto this CPU heatsink stroke fan. We are actually seeing a temperature drop. This would be a nice solution if it works. Yeah, we are seeing a temperature drop. This could be a winner. Because I have to consider not just cooling performance, but also feasibility. Um, and this is a lot more feasible to have a fan like this than it is to come up with some kind of middle section that's going to accommodate the SSD or hard drive and be able to pull in airflow. This actually seems to work pretty well. We're keeping the temperature down to around anywhere from 71 to 73. Okay, so I mean we are getting, I think I would have to raise this so that there's actually room for the air to hit it rather than just sit right on top. So yeah, this might actually be better. I can make a new case, oops, I can make a new case for the top that kind of clips on there like the original but then goes like that and then accommodates the fan and then that will just sit on top like that. Okay, yeah, so this time I'm really going to stop the video. <laughs> so yeah, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and there is going to be a part two because I have to do something to cool this. Uh, thanks for watching.